Sketchbook's getting some love this month. <laughs> Today is October 23rd, which means we are on the 23rd day of Inktober. And the prompt is... Muddy. Muddy. I instantly want to draw a little pot belly pig. Okay, this is gonna take some practice. <laughs> I've never drawn a pig before. I'm just realizing. All right, there's my first attempt. Let's get a reference. <laughs> oh my gosh, this piggy has ice cream. The pure joy. <laughs> so we're 23 days into October, right? And uh, that's a lot of days. <laughs> And if you've been uh, following along Inktober, if you've made it that far, congratulations. Whew. I've only done a couple 30 day challenges and they definitely, I've noticed some very similar things happen each time. And um, I always get to this point where it starts feeling like a chore, which I mean, whenever you do something that's monotonous, that's going to happen. And I definitely reached that point, I think earlier on last week and so I think my art was suffering from that. So then I started trying to be a little bit more detailed and putting more time into it, at least trying. Um, and I think things were turning out a little bit better, but then I started, I don't know, I just started feeling, um, I don't know, I started looking at other people's inktobers and then I started comparing myself and oh, that's just, that's a terrible rabbit hole to fall into because no one's ever going to be happy if you're comparing yourself to others. And then you have to talk yourself out of it and <laughs> it's so hard to get yourself into a better mental state after you've, I don't know, started doing that. <laughs> what the heck does a back leg look like? That doesn't look right at all. Portions are a little jacked up on this one. <laughs> Well, at least he's happy. Anyway, the point I was trying to make is whenever you try to do like a 30 day challenge or when you challenge yourself to draw regularly, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint, and you're going to go through ups and downs and it's going to get a little scary and you're going to uh, go through some uh, mental um, challenges. My opinion is if that does happen, that's probably a good thing because that means you're trying to evaluate yourself and self-evaluation is important if you want to make improvements. So yeah, just take it with stride and uh, usually those feelings of not being good enough means you're about to maybe make a breakthrough and maybe figure out something. I'm still in that feeling so talking about this is a little uh, <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully helping. I just feel a little. Uh. What my my goal for today's Inktober is to really give it my all and not try to skimp out on like things that I'm not good at, like drawing pigs. I'm very inspired, and I'm not gonna let the fact that I've never drawn a pig before in my life stop me. So actually, their nose isn't completely round. At least not this one. It's more ship it like this. The nostrils are like hereish. This guy's ears poke like straight up. That looks like a donkey. Why does that look like a donkey? <laughs> This may be looking a little more pig-like. And of course I need a little smile. And of course, where's the mud? That's the prompt, isn't it? Muddy! So we need to put mud like all over these guys. Pigs are funny looking. <laughs> Did you know pigs are ranked number four in intelligence behind chimps, dolphins, and elephants? Says Pinterest. To try and simplify it a little bit. I don't want to draw too realistic but I do need to look a real photo to see what features are important, you know? I think the feature that I was missing in my first drawings that didn't really use a reference is that pigs have a very large under chin bit. I mean, it's not really a chin because I feel like a big chin, I would think it pokes out that way, but it's large in a downward direction, <laughs> like this. Basically, what I'm what I'm drawing, because <laughs> I can't seem to explain it, but that, that's what I, that's what I mean. And once I started doing that, it seems to be helping a bit. Oh, look at that cute little piggy. And a bandana. Ooh, what if I added a character? Ooh, that same character that I drew with the chicken, maybe. This girl. What if I drew this girl, since I've already put time into sort of designing her character, and she has chickens. Is it too far to say that maybe she also has a little piggy? I'm gonna have to draw a little smaller here. Oh, what if they're splashing each other with mud? Oh, that'd be too cute, wouldn't it? <laughs> so she's like, ah! Her hands are up like this, like, ah, I'm getting mud on me. And then the pig is here, and the mud is splashing up. And then the pig's turned the other way, kicking the mud, smiling, like, oh yeah, look what I did. And she's like, ah, I'm getting mud on me. But she's having fun, so she's like, yeah, it's funny, ah. <laughs> Isn't that a masterpiece? Probably should uh, try and define this a little bit more before transferring it to the main page. Of course, some mud, and maybe, a little fence, so the little piggy doesn't escape because he's obviously a troublemaker. There we go. Defined it a little bit more. So let's take that concept and transfer it onto this page. I want 
it to be pretty expressive so I'm going to be very loose and try to just sketch out where all the elements are on the page like the main element so the main element is obviously the pig so it has to fit on the page and then her expression of being like you know mud in the face and then she's going to be trying to shield her face so her arms are going to be up like that and the other hand is going to be trying to block this mud and her body would probably be like pulling away from the mud let me see she'll be trying her face to the left she doesn't want to get a mouthful of mud but she'd also be trying to get a good look at the piggy. She wants to know what he's up to, when he's gonna stop, so she, maybe she can grab him, tickle him. <laughs> maybe her expression, she'd be squinting a little because she doesn't want to get mud in her eyes. But she's also having fun, so we don't want her to look too upset. So we're gonna put a big smile on her face. And this hand blocking, trying to block the mud. He like a something like a dit. Then we have our mud. <laughs> hmm. I kind of lost her pose somewhere in here. What was I thinking? Um, little squiggly piggy tail. <laughs> Can't forget that. You need to make sure the pig's looking at her. Okay, that looks a little mer, but I'll get back to that. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Because if she was standing up, I feel like she'd be too far away and be a lot harder for him to get the mud in her face. So by having her kneel down, like she was gonna pet him or something, and then she, and then little piggy turned around and splashed mud in her face. A little storytelling. <laughs> As simple as that is. And then that fence. Maybe it's a little janky. It needs a little maintenance. <laughs> maybe there's something on the fence. Just hang in there. Ooh, maybe we should put the chicken on here. Incorporate the chicken from that one prompt to day five or something. <laughs> See if I can still remember how to make a chicken. Draw a chicken, I mean. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? You crazy. And then mud. Mud, mud, mud everywhere. Cause that's the prompt word after all. Okay, that arm looks funny. That one doesn't make any sense. Okay, let's see, this would be coming back maybe like here, and then this would come down here. That's better. Okay, glad we solved that problem. <laughs> okay, now I just need to finalize the little piggy down here. I don't think it makes sense to have that back foot down. Okay, I like that. I see, see how the, there's a bit of a pretty cool flow to this. Like the pig is looking up, the mud follows up, hits her face. And then her head and her arms and her postures all kind of like make an arrow that points up at this chicken. And then the chicken takes that focal point and points back down at the pig. So it's kind of like a whoo, your eye just sort of travels around and around and around until you've seen the whole picture, which seems kind of neato. All right, for inking, I'm going to ink with the black ink and I'm nearly out of it. Hopefully it lasts. <laughs> What, about a week left of Inktober? And I'm gonna be using a new nib this time. I haven't used this nib yet, and I feel like I need to try out all the nibs before Inktober's over. This is the drawing nib, what it's called. Speedball's drawing nib. And it goes onto the speedball handle. Just fits on my nose and so on. This is my first time using this, so hopefully it works very similarly <laughs> to the other ones. That one sticks so far in. It's just such a little nub. Looks like a turtle. Um, so yeah, let's shake up the ink. Erase the sketch just ever so slightly. And then I go in and ink it. I just dipped it right into the handle, which was a mistake. This doesn't feel any different than the other nibs so far. Like they all have different names and they all look completely different, but they all seem to work just about the same for me. Oh, the bowl pointed one has been my favorite so far, which is... This is the one I've been using for the last couple weeks, or week, I think just week. <laughs> and I've been really liking that one. Definitely feels a little softer than maybe the bowl pointed. Ah, I just dragged the pencil over a place I didn't want it to go. The paper lifted up when I lifted up the pen and it just drew. Gotta be careful. Ooh, this one I seem to have more control over going in different directions, which I like, but I feel like it's softer than the other nibs and because of that, I'm getting a much shakier line. And I have shaky hands, so. <laughs> ah, I'm already messing this up. Dang it. And all that talk about, this is gonna be my good one. Jinx today. <laughs> Maybe I should go back to a nib I'm more comfortable with. Yeah, this one's way, so okay, I'm noticing a difference. <laughs> this one's way softer than the last nib. If you've ever used like a brush pen, and when you tried to use it, you couldn't get like a very solid line because you kept shaking. That's what this one feels a lot like. And I don't love brush pen. You can imagine how I'm feeling. <laughs> oh yeah, I am not liking this at all. Dang it, no. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, I'm switching nibs. This is uh... 
This is too much for me to bear. And I already did the face, which is usually my favorite part to draw. And I kind of messed that all up. I'm gonna switch to the bowl pointed nib. because I feel like I was getting really used to that one. All right, <laughs> switching back to this nib. Oh, see that one just looks nice. Doesn't that just look cool? <laughs> all right, let's see if this solves some of my problems. So, oh yeah, I can get a way skinnier line. Okay, now that I've used these back to back, this one's definitely a more preferred nib. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is turning out better. It's a bummer that I did the face in that way. So yeah, if you're having trouble with your art, maybe it's the art supplies' fault. <laughs> there you go. Okay, it only took what? 23 days, but I have a favorite nib now. <laughs> I think I'm going to add all the mud in last with the brown ink. I think that should look pretty cool. That's the plan at least. So I'm not going to draw any of the like lines of mud. I'm going to save that for later. Okay, next. Oh, let's get to this fence. I can remember chicken anatomy <laughs> from the chicken prompt. Or I could just look back and cheat. Something like that. So whatever this rag thing is, <laughs> hanging over it. The ear. Oh, hoofs. Are they called hooves on a pig? I think so. Right, and then once that's dry, I can color in all the mud. Oh, and erase, of course, all of the pencil sketch. I think even though this had a pretty poor start, I think I kind of pulled it together. So let's let that dry completely before I try to erase because I've gone through some <laughs> mistakes where I've tried to erase and like these parts where I sort of like go over with the ink multiple times, so that have a lot more ink there. So it takes a little longer to dry. And while I might check and be like, oh, well, that's all dry. And then I go to erase it and I just smudge straight through one of those deeper puddles of ink and that's never a good time. So we're going to wait a good long while and let this dry. Okay. All right, everything's dry. <laughs> All right, before I add the brown ink, I do want to try and fix the face. So I'm going to use what I've been using as the Posca pen, but I don't see it. Oh, wait, it's out. <laughs> it's right here. This is what I've been using, the Uni Posca pen in white. I think this is the fine point one. And we can go over the little places where we've messed up. Like that. All right, now I think it's time to go in with the mud and just make a mess. <laughs> I'm excited about this part. I think this is gonna be kind of fun. Let me first swatch this out. Ooh, doesn't that just look like mud? That is the perfect color. Let's see what it looks like. It looks pretty earthy, I like that. It's a little darker. If we add water. Yeah, it's got a nice red, earthy brown tone. I'm liking it happens if we add ink to an already wet surface. Does that look muddy? Kind of like that. I'm going to try and do that all over here. I want to do the splashing mud first before I do the pig pen mud. So it would probably be coming up like this. Maybe there's a little smaller particle. Something like that. Some spots. I should probably put some like on her arm so she's actually already protected herself a little bit. Them on her clothes probably, probably making a big mess. And then her knees, of course, because she's literally kneeling in the mud. I actually kind of want a little bit on her chin. And then I need a ton of mud. Actually, but this I want it to be lighter, so I'm going to wipe a little off on some paper towel. So there's some dried mud, like, you know, little piggy's been in the mud and then it dried and then he went in the mud again, kind of thing. And then I can put another layer on top of that. Which would hopefully look like multiple dried layers of mud. That's the plan anyway. Ta-da! Okay, next we need to add a big wad of mud that they're kneeling in. That is like the perfect mud color, isn't it? Maybe some more particles. Oh, there'd definitely be mud on our feet, wouldn't there? Continue to color that in. I'm gonna leave a little bit of white. Oops, <laughs> messed that up. I'm trying to leave a little bit of white contrast purposes between the pig's belly and the actual mud, but this paintbrush isn't giving me any luck with that. I tried. All right, so I can actually go in with the Posca pen once that's dry and um, steady out that line a bit more, but I'm going to remove a little bit of ink from the brush, try to add some more mud here. Do some on the elbows. 
very muddy. <laughs> and then the perfectly clean little chicken up there. We can actually color the chicken in with brown and that might help even out the color here. Because right now it's very bottom heavy with the color. But I think if we go in with like that lighter brown, so if I add some water to my brush, I think and then take a little bit off of there. Yeah, so you can get that lighter brown color. Color in the chicken. I guess it's more, is that a hen or a rooster? Not entirely sure. Probably even color in a fence post with an even lighter brown. Yeah, I like that. I do like, oh, I almost dumped that. Ooh. Excuse me while I have a heart attack. There we go. I might also, I think when that's dry, go in with the Posca pen and outline the mud splash. That'll help too. But I think I wanna just color in the hands completely brown. Like she's been throwing mud a bit too. Maybe I'm just enjoying painting. <laughs> Something like that. I like that. I think that works. Add some texture to the hen or rooster. Chicken thing. <laughs> And then along this edge, I was a little bit more sketchy with it because I want it to like hint that it continues on, you know, the mud continues um, without having to actually color straight to the edge. Now, is there anywhere else I want to add some tones? I'm thinking I kind of want to go in with this lighter brown color in the hair. Here we go. Now you know where the hair is. I think I could do this without this all being dry. <laughs> Famous last words, eh? Oh, I think this character actually had freckles if I remember correctly, so. Let me try and um, put some of those in without smudging anything. Ooh, what could be cool? I don't know if I should wait for everything to dry before I do that. But what if I use, if I use the pen instead of the brush with the brown and add some like wood details to the post? I think that could look very, very cool if I do it right. Let me put this black away before I make an absolute mess. Let's see what that looks like. If I can. You could test it over here. Oh yeah, see it is much darker. And then what I would do is actually draw like a wood texture though. Like that, does that make sense? Does that look like wood? I'll just do that for the rest of it. Voila! Ooh, I do think that makes it look cooler. I like it, I like it. I've definitely gotten better at um, writing with these pens. Day 23rd. <laughs> I just wrote day 23rd. This is why you shouldn't talk and write at the same time. All right, and then once that's dry, I'm gonna add in the final details and we should be done after that. All right, it's all dry again. And I'm just gonna go in with the Posca pen and just add some final little things here and there. Actually, it doesn't really make sense for there to be white there. It should be blending in. Oh well. Oh, I just put my hand in that. Uh, Oh, what I really want to do is add a white outline around the mud splash. Try to make it more obvious. I think that works. So yeah, here's my finished uh, illustration for day 23, prompt muddy. I'm actually quite happy with that. I think it's cute and it kind of tells a story, you know? It's a lot more like what I've always wanted my art to kind of be. Especially when you compare it to that little guy right there. <laughs> And I think this was really important for me because like I said at the beginning of the video, I was having a little bit of trouble and I was comparing myself to other artists who were better than me. And, and I think it's really important that I drew this and had a lot of fun with it. So yeah, I'm very happy. I think it just turned out cute. It definitely encompasses like what my art is, but I think why I'm going through this phase where like I'm looking at other people's art and like not being completely happy with what I'm making is because it's time for me to make an upgrade and I'm getting a little complacent with what I'm making. So hmm, maybe in the future my art will start evolving a little bit. I think what makes someone a good artist isn't that they draw better than other people, it's that they don't ever give up even when they think their art sucks. I think that's the difference between a good artist and a great artist. And uh, I'm gonna do my best <laughs> to not give up. <sighs> I think what it is is I'm being a little lazy with my art and I'm feeling that and I know I'm being a little lazy. And I'm like, I know I can do better. And I think that has a lot to do with it. So yeah, look for maybe some improvement in the future. Ooh, let's hope, let's hope. Fingers crossed, right? <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you were interested in checking out all of my other Inktober drawings, uh, you can check them out on my Instagram page and I'll have a link in the description. I wanna thank you for coming along with me on my journey of creating this illustration and I'll see you guys all next week. I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.